Um, before I start, I want to give all honors and glories and praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Bahavah Kakodash, Yahweh, which is the one true name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, but his one true name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, who will well and teach well, because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Shai. Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the leg. And shalom to you, sincere brothers scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazakah from the servants of Yahweh Wai, Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And uh, pretty much in this lesson, it's going to be titled as the image of the Messiah. The image of the Messiah. And uh, I'm doing this lesson again because I saw videos of certain people. Um, Elder Apostle Tahar shared a clip of an individual. He's from the I the ICGBJC crew. He was. He got kicked out or something like that. Um, pretty much um, he shared a clip of him saying that the Messiah is Middle Eastern and, you know, he's not a so-called black man and this, 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 and that. Well, we're going to go to the scriptures. And when I start this lesson, for those of you that are against what I say in this video, because I'm going to prove that the Messiah was a so-called black man or is a so-called black man, according to the scriptures, when he was on the earth. And if you're a person that disagrees with that, don't watch this lesson, please. I don't need your comment. I don't need no type of debating. I don't need any of that. I'm not a debater. I'm not doing that. I'm prophesying, teaching the scriptures to those that are sincere and those that are, that want to have the understanding of this truth. So before I start this lesson, if you're a person that disagrees that the Messiah was a so-called black man, you believe that he's every single color, you believe that he was an Arab, or you believe that he's Middle Eastern, do not watch this lesson. Don't watch this lesson because you don't you don't get it and you're never going to understand it because the Lord ain't dealing with you. So let's get to the lesson. Lord willing, lesson is edifying. I had to say that. So uh, this lesson is going to be titled as the image of the Messiah. And this was John the Revelator. He was on the island of Patmos. All right. And the island of Patmos is pretty much a sword mine where a lot of criminals be sent to. OK, he was sent to the island of Patmos. And when he was on the island of Patmos, he had a vision of the Messiah, right? And we're going to prove that. This is Revelations 1 and 7. So he saw the Messiah. John the Revelator did. This is Revelation 1 and 7. It says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. And Oh, no, that's not it. Salakia. Verse 9. Tripping. Salakia. That's a different thing. Every eye shall see him. That's a future prophecy. But Salakia, that's not the prophecy I want to get in this lesson. Revelation 1 and 9. It says, I, John, who also am your brother... And companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach that was in the Isles, which is Isles' island, that is called Patmos. So he was on the island of Patmos when he had this vision, when he saw the Messiah. And it says, for the word of Yahweh and for the testimony of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right, so he saw, he had, he was on the island of Patmos, right? And he had a vision, and he saw the Messiah. Revelation 1 and 13, And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So this is was his, this was his apparel. This is what the Messiah had on. This is what John the Revelator saw of his apparel, right? Of his attire, what he had on. So he had a garment down to the foot with fringes on it. And it says, and a girt about the paps with a golden girdle. A golden girdle is a belt that goes around your waist. So you saw the Messiah in a long garment, like what the elders and apostles of Great Millstone wear. Verse 14, and his head and his hairs were white like wool. Now he's giving you the description of what the Messiah looked like. The appearance of what he looked like. He saw the Messiah. So if a person sees somebody, they literally seeing them. They telling you what he looks like. How is this not talking about the Messiah when he says this is what he saw? This is what he sees. He saw what the Messiah looked like. He was around the Messiah. Wasn't he around the Messiah? He was an apostle of the Messiah. He'd been around the Messiah. So he knows what the Messiah looked like. You can't argue this scripture here. And his head and his hair, his head, his head and his hairs were white like wool. 
white woolly hair. When you look at an elderly Negro man, their hair is white and woolly. This is what he saw of the Messiah. It says, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. The Messiah's eyes was as a flame of fire. He drank a lot of wine. He was a wine bibber. Look up definition of wine bibber. The Messiah drank a lot of wine. It mentions the Messiah when you go to Genesis 49, and we're going to get that out too. It mentions the Messiah in, 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 in Genesis, the 49th chapter. The Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. He's not just mentioned in the New Testament only. You know, just for you Old Testament Israelites. Verse 14, his head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. So it's giving you a description of the Messiah. It's letting you know what he looks like. That was his appearance of what John the Revelator saw, what he looked like, his image, what he looked like. Right? Verse 15, and his feet. So he giving you a, a description. And his feet like onto, onto fine brass as if it burnt in a furnace. See? So he's giving you a description of what color the Messiah was. It says, and his feet like onto fine brass. Brass is a light golden color. But if you put it in a furnace and burn brass, it gets very, 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 very dark. So the Messiah was a dark skinned man. It says as if they burnt in the furnace. So you burn something, it gets very, 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 very dark. It's telling you here that the Messiah was a so-called Negro man. You got some people that said, well, he had some color to him yet. Yeah, no, he had a lot of color to him. He was Kadar, Kwadar. If you understand Hebrew, Kwadar. He was Kwadar, which is dark skin. He was Kwadar. Dark. He was dark skin. He was a dark skinned man. It says in his voice as the sound of many waters. So John the Revelator had a vision of the Messiah and he explained his apparel. He explained his image, right? He explained the color of his hair, the color of his beard. He explained the, his eye color. He's giving you a description in these scriptures here. So how is this? How is, how is the Messiah Middle, Middle Eastern? How is the Messiah an Arab? How is the Messiah... Um, not a so-called black man. How? He's giving you a description. He's telling you this. But see, a lot of you wacky-tacky Christians, uh, Christian apologists, y'all don't have the understanding because the Lord is not giving it to you to understand it. You guys always try to go over this these precepts here. You try to skip them or you try to try to somewhat, they try to do the best to correct this, but you can't correct it. This is the truth. How are you going to correct something that's the truth? You Edomites have that bad. Y'all always been doing that shit. You've been trying to lie over the scriptures. You try to say he's Middle Eastern. You try to say he's an Arab. Or you try to say he's every color. And that's not in the scriptures. How is the Messiah every color when the scripture is telling you right here the color of his skin? And some people, then when you prove this, you got some people that are simple and say, why does it matter? It shouldn't matter what color the Lord is. Yes, it does. Because our people have been taught in this society to believe that he's a so-called white man. They've been pushing white supremacy. These 501c3 charter churches, yes, have been putting white supremacy. They've been pushing white supremacy all through the Hollywood movies, all through the scripture. They even There's even old-time Bibles where they had images in the Bible. They had pictures, images, like pictures, pictures, uh, false pictures in the scriptures, having a Messiah white with thorns on his head. You put in your, you forcing your images in the scriptures. We're not doing that. We're not forcing our images in the scriptures. We're reading out of the scriptures. You so-called white people, you guys are forcing your images in the scriptures of your likeness. As the scriptures mentioned, you painted your own images of your own likeness into the scriptures. We ain't doing that. We're reading out of the scriptures. You guys put pictures in the scriptures, false pictures, false pictures in the scriptures, having the angels white, having the Messiah white, having all the prophets white. You guys force your images into the Bible. We're not doing that. We're reading out of the scriptures. Big difference. This is this is Daniel. That's a big difference, man. This is Daniel 10 and verse 5. And we're going to read down to 7. Because because uh, John the Revelator had a vision of the Messiah. Right? He explained to you what the Messiah looked like. And Daniel the prophet had a vision of the Messiah. Right? Daniel the prophet had a vision of the Messiah. And he saw the Messiah. And then we're going to go to Genesis 49 and prove it. The Messiah is mentioned all through the, all through the Bible. He's mentioned all through the scriptures. Zechariah the prophet even mentioned the Messiah in the scriptures. Yes, he did. 
Let's prove it. Daniel 10 and 5. It says, Then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose lines were girded with fire gold of Uphas. Verse 6. His body his body also was like a burial, and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire. So he's giving you a description of the Messiah. Daniel the prophet is also given a description of the of the Messiah. It says, and his arms and his feet, his arms and his feet, and his arms and his feet like the color of polished brass. Didn't we just read that in Revelations 1 and 13 through for verse 1 and 1 and 13 to verse 15, right? And his voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Verse 7, and I, Daniel alone, and I, Daniel alone, saw the vision. See, so he saw the vision. You had John the Revelator that saw the vision, and you had Daniel the prophet that saw the vision. But Daniel the prophet saw the vision first before John the Revelator because Revelation is, is in the New Testament. Daniel is in the Old Testament. So Daniel had the vision first before John the Revelator did. So John, uh, Daniel, Daniel the prophet had a vision first before John, John the Revelator did, and that's in, that you can read. We're reading the scriptures right now. So you have prophets that saw the Messiah. I believe I, Isaiah fifty three talks about the Messiah, man. Isaiah fifty three mentions about the Messiah. The Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. This is to cut you Old Testament Israelites as well, because you guys just believe that the Messiah is just mentioned in the New Testament. No, he's mentioned all through the all through the Bible. He's mentioned in Genesis. He's mentioned in Zechariah 9 and 9. He's mentioned in Daniel 10, 5 through 11. He's mentioned in Isaiah 53. And he's mentioned in Revelation chapter 1. He's mentioned all through the scriptures. There's more scriptures too. He's even mentioned in Psalms. He's mentioned all through the scriptures, man. Verse 7. And I, Daniel alone, saw the vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision. But a great quickening fell upon them. So that they fled to hide themselves. See? So Daniel the prophet was the only one to see see this vision. Just like John the Revelator, he saw the vision. See? So the Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. And the Messiah is a so-called black man according to the scriptures. Genesis 49. And we're gonna go, we're gonna start at verse. Mm, I should start at verse 12, but I'll get to the main point. We're going to get to the main point. This is verse 10. Let's start at verse 10. Jeremiah, uh, Genesis 49. Salakia. Genesis 49 and 10. It says, The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Judah is the so-called Negroes. All right? That's the tribe of Judah. Messiah sprang out of the tribe of Judah. If, yeah, if the Messiah was dwelling on the earth today, he would be titled as a so-called Negro man. Judah is the so-called Negroes, a.k.a. African Americans. That's the tribe of Judah. All right. It says, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh comes. Shiloh is talking about the Messiah. All right. That's Shiloh. It says, and unto him shall the gathering of, of the people be. Right. Because the, the Israelites, they're going to be gathered under Yahweh Shai. The people are going to be gathered under Yahweh Shai. Talking about the Israelites. They're going to be gathered under Yahweh Shai. Because when Yahweh Shai come back, he's going to gather his elect. This is talking about the Messiah. Verse 11, it says, binding his fuel onto the vine and his ass's colt, right? Because an ass is a donkey and an ass's colt, a colt is a baby donkey. It says, onto the choice vine, he washed his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. This is mentioned in the Messiah. And Zechariah the prophet also mentioned the Messiah. Let's get that out. I just want to prove this. Uh, Zechariah 9 and 9. Zechariah the prophet saw the Messiah, not saw the Messiah, but he prophesied about the Messiah. There's many prophets that seen the Messiah and prophesied about the Messiah. This is Zechariah the prophet. It says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just having salvation. It says, Lowly and riding upon an ass and upon a colt. Upon, upon a colt. The fowl of an ass. See, the Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. This is talking about the Messiah riding on a donkey. Riding on a donkey next to it, a baby colt. Right? Uh, I mean, a baby donkey, which is a colt. Let's get that in Matthew. Um, I think it's Matthew 21. And we're going to read verse 1 to 7. 
because this is that, that was a prophet that was a prophecy mentioned by Zechariah, the prophet of the Messiah doing that. And now when you go to the New Testament, the Messiah is mentioned. I just want to prove this. This is Matthew 21 and 1. It says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethage unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Yahawashai two disciples. So Yahawashai sent two of his disciples to go gather the donkey and a baby donkey, which is a colt, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you a straight way ye shall find an ass which is a donkey and a colt which is a baby donkey with her loose them and bring them unto me and if any man say aught unto you ye, ye shall say the lord have need of them and straightway he sent he will send them all of this was done that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying tell ye the daughter of zion behold thy king cometh unto thee and sitteth upon an ass and a coat, the fowl of an ass, right? And that was a prophecy mentioned by Zechariah the prophet, which you read in Zechariah 9 and 9, right? That was a prophecy given by Zechariah the prophet of the Messiah riding on that donkey and that ass, right? It's mentioned in Matthew 21. So the Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. And we're going to still go back because I got to read uh, that uh, Genesis 49 and 12. But I just I just want to prove that the Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. That's what this is about. So you know, you know, you you new guys in this thing, don't worry about Matthew twenty one or or Genesis forty nine and uh, you know that don't worry about that part. Because this is just proving that the Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. This ain't really going on to the main point of what I'm getting out. I'm just using this, you know, bringing these scriptures out to prove that the Messiah is mentioned all through the Bible. He's not just in the New Testament. It says, Matthew 21 and 4, it says, All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, That's Zechariah the prophet. This Zechariah the prophet mentioned the Messiah. Verse 5, it says, Till ye the daughters of the son, it says, Till tell ye the daughter of son, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon an ass, and a coat of the fowl of an ass. I mean, and a coat of a fowl of an ass. So like in verse 6. It says, and the disciples went and did as Yahweh commanded them. See, so the disciples did as what the Messiah commanded them. Now, again, when you go to verse, four, when you go to verse four, you read to verse five. That was a prophecy mentioned by Zechariah the prophet. That's what that was talking about. Verse seven, and brought the ass, which is the donkey, and the colt, which is a baby donkey, and put them on their clothes, and they set the, they set him thereon. See, there you go. The Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. I just wanted to prove that. Because <clears throat> we're kind of going aside from the lesson, but I just wanted to prove that the Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. Now let's read verse 11 again. Genesis 49 and 11. Biting his fowl onto the vine and his ass's colt onto the choice vine, he was washing his garments in wine and his clothes in the blood of grapes. See, the Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. This prophecy was mentioned by Zechariah the prophet, which we read in Zechariah 9 and 9, and we also read in Matthew 21, verse 1 through 7. That's in the scriptures. Verse 12, this is talking about the Messiah. It says, his eyes shall be red with wine. The Messiah drank a lot of wine. Look up wine, Bibber. He drank a lot of wine. The Messiah drank a lot of wine. That's why his eyes was red. And it says, and his teeth white with milk. His teeth white with milk is not talking about his actual teeth. That's talking about the sincere milk of the word. When you go into, uh, I think it's... 1 Peter 2 and 2 or 2 Peter 2 and 2. And I'll get that out just real quick. And then we'll we'll wrap it up with uh, Hebrews 7 and 4. This is, um, I think it's 2 Peter 2 and 2. Nope, it's 1 Peter 2 and 2. So like it. 1 Peter 2 and 2. I always get 2 Peter 2 and 2 and 1 Peter 2 and 2 mixed up. So, so like it. 1 Peter 2 and 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, right? The sincere milk of the word. That's what his teeth white with milk is talking about. The sincere milk of the word. These scriptures. The word is written of Yahweh Shai. Yes, the word is written of Yahweh Shai, which goes to Psalms 40 and 7, right? And I believe Hebrews 10 and 7. The sincere milk of the word, the, the milk of the word is, is talking about the scriptures, all right? So again, the Messiah, man, he's mentioned all through the scriptures. He's mentioned all through the Bible. So we'll wrap it up with uh, Hebrews 7 and 4. Salakia. 
This is Hebrews 7 and 14. So like in Hebrews 7 and 14, it says, For it is evident that our Lord Yahweh Shai, right? It's talking about Yahweh Shai. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. Yahweh Shai. The Messiah comes from the line of Judah. He's an Israelite. He came from the tribe of Judah, which is the so-called Negroes. And if he was dwelling on the earth today, he would be touted as a so-called Negro man. Yes, the Messiah would. Judah is the so-called Negroes today. That's the tribe of Judah. It says, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So there you go. The Messiah is mentioned all through the scriptures. So, hey, I'm going to do this really quick. Let me see. For edification purposes. Because I'm just going to show you an image. Because people have you to believe that this right here is what the Messiah looked like. And the Messiah does not look like this. This is not the Messiah. All right. This here is an image put up of a dude by the name of Cedric Borgier. So this image that's in all the churches is not the Messiah. This is a homosexual by the name of Cedric Borgier, which is this guy right here during the Renaissance era. This is Cedric Borgier. Now, this dude here, he was a homosexual. He had sex with Leonardo da Vinci, right? He was his lover. And the dude named Leonardo da Vinci, he painted this image here of this guy. Because this guy died. He died in a war. And his father wanted him to be remembered. So he had Leonardo da Vinci place an image of his son up to be worshipped as the Messiah. Which is this guy right here. This is not the Messiah. This is a homosexual. Alright. And this guy right here. Which is this person here that they painted an image of to place him up as the Messiah as. This guy was a homosexual. He did incest. He had sex with his sister. Right? This dude was wicked. He killed his own brother. Yeah, he killed his... He murdered his brother. The Borgers were wicked people. They were a wicked people. Alright? So, this image is nowhere in the Bible. You can't give me a precept of this scripture here. You can try to search back and forth. This script, this image is nowhere in the Bible. When we say that, people want to say, try to come up with something and try to get defended about it. This is the truth. This is not the Messiah. This is a homosexual. So when you worship Jesus Christ, and if you're a person that got this image on your wall, you're doing idolatry. This is a homosexual. This is not the Messiah. Now, I'm going to give you an actual image on what the Messiah would look like according to the scriptures. Now, we're not saying that this is the Messiah. But this is more accurate on what he would look like according to the scriptures. This is more accurate on what the Messiah would look like according to the Bible. Whether you believe it or not, this is more accurate on what the Messiah would look like according to the scriptures. We're not saying this is the Messiah, but this is more accurate on what the Messiah would look like according to the Bible. Yes, according to the Revelations 1, 13 to 15, this is what the Messiah would look like according to the scriptures, man. All right, this is what the Messiah would look like according to the Bible. You can get offended about it. You can get upset. The true name of the only begotten son, too, is Yahweh Shai. As you see at the bottom here. Y-A-H-A-W-A-S-H-I. Yahweh Shai. That Yah means he. Yahweh Shai means savior or deliverer. But it's actually Ha-Mashiach. Ha-Mashiach. Ha means the, right? Mashiach means anointed. So Ha Mashiach, the anointed, he saves, he delivers. That's his true name. Ha Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. Ha means the, Mashiach means anointed. Yah means he, Yahweh Shai means savior or deliverer. Now, you know, I'm going to get all these Yahuas and saying his name is Yahuwah. That I don't believe in that. That's your doctrine. I don't need your uh, opinion of the name being Yeshua and all that. That's not his name. You guys are speaking Yiddish, and you fucking going off. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Because last time I did this lesson, I had so many comments on the Messiah's name is Yeshua, Yahushua. That's not his name. None of those dumbass names is his name. You're speaking fucking Yiddish. I don't want to hear that. You're speaking Yiddish. That's not the name of the Messiah. That's not his name. Yeshua is not his name. That's Yiddish. There's no fucking you in the Hebrew. Learn your Hebrew. Learn your Hebrew. So with that... We're going to end it there with that. Lord willing, that's some edifying. I want to give all honors and glory and praise to Yahweh Bashim Ashai Bashim And double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who will well teach well because those are the men who I learned this truth from through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Ashai. 
Peace, blessings, salutations to the whole for the elect. And shalom to you, sincere brother scattered abroad, pushing forth this word in truth and sincerity. I am the brother Mashiach Arazaka from the Servants of Yahweh Yahweh Shai Camp, Las Vegas, Nevada branch. And Lord willingness, this was edifying. Till next time, I say shalom.